Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, and I will be demonstrating the calculation of uh, the centroid of a complex shape. Now, if we start off with reading the problem statement, find the centroid, the x and y bar, of the complex shape in respect to the lower left-hand corner. The lower left-hand corner is defined by this circle here, and our x bar would be, if we had a centroid, if we located the centroid, the balancing point of this particular object in the x direction will be the x bar. In the y direction will be the y bar. Okay, so those are the x and y bar. Let's, uh, let's go and define what a complex shape is. Now, a complex shape is really a combination of simple shapes, and I'm going to define a simple shape now. A simple shape is the rectangle by itself. That's a simple shape. This semicircle on top here, that is a simple shape when it's by itself. And when you look at the circle in here, that is a simple shape when it's by itself. But when you have them com combined together, when there's combinations of them, then it is considered to be a complex shape. Okay? Let's go and look at the formula that we'll be using to calculate complex shapes. When we look at uh, x bar, x bar is equal to summation of ADX divided by summation of area. And again, y bar is summation of ADY divided by summation of area. The only thing that really changes uh, with the formula is the ADY and the ADX. Okay, so when we look at uh, what those variables are, well, the variables in, in the whole equation. Summation of area means the, you take all of the simple shapes and you summate them, you add the areas together and you have summation of area. And that is common in both of the equations. When we look at the A here, times the DX, for each one of the simple shapes, you have to have the A times the distance to the centroid of that simple shape, and you add the three shapes, uh, the ADX together, and you will get summation of ADX, okay? So let's go and look at the um, placing the centroid for each one of these simple shapes. This is not for the complex shape, but this, this is for the simple shape. When we look at uh, placing the, the centroid for the rectangle, it would be half of the height, which is 250, divided by 2, which will give you um, 125 to that distance. And in the x direction, it will be seven, um, 20, 150 divided by 2, which will give you 75. Okay. When we look at uh, the centroid of the three simple shapes, we see in the x direction, all of them will turn out to be 75. Right? The, the centroid of the semicircle will happen right about there just a little bit above the cut edge okay the centroid of uh, the rectangle halfway of that distance and the centroid of the circle is the center of the circle so it's because this uh, this particular object in the x direction is symmetrical all of the centroids will land up will, will line up now when we look at uh, another way of recognizing symmetry of an object if I were to cut this object directly down the center in the y direction, I would have two equal parts. They might be mirror image of each other, but they are two equal parts. And that is an indication of symmetry. Also, the indication of symmetry in the x direction is that the x value is all 75, and that's an indication of symmetry. Now, why would we want to know? Why would we want to know? Uh, symmetry because symmetry helps us to minimize our calculation if I see symmetry in the X direction because I cut along the Y axis I could just make a statement for this calculation here due to symmetry in the X direction my X bar is going to be 150 divided by 2 which is 75 okay so and that would take care of this but when we look in the Y direction do we have symmetry in the Y direction no matter where we cut this along the x direction, we cannot have two equal halves, or you're not going to have um, the the same way that these uh, these values here line up as 75 for index. You're not going to have that in the y direction. Okay, so there's no symmetry in the y direction, but you have symmetry in the x direction, and uh, 
let's go and calculate uh, the x and y bar. I'm going to do still do the entire calculation for the x bar and the y bar to show that uh, recognition of symmetry is valid. Okay, I'm going to do this calculation in a table form because I believe that uh, for starting out, when you just start into these problems, it's important that you uh, lay it out in the table form so that you could see how the calculation are moving along so you could have the numerator here and you could have the denominator here okay let's go to the table when we look at the rectangle we have I have um, all of the shapes in the first column first of all and the areas and then we have the DX dy ADX which is the area times the DX value in this column and the area times the dy value in this column when I summate those, I, those are the numbers that I will be using to calculate my uh, x bar and y bar. So let's go and look at the, the numbers in detail now. Calculating the area of the rectangle, 37,500. I'll just go back and show you where that, those numbers come from. 150 times 250 will give you that number. When we look at the area of the semicircle, it will be pi r squared divided by 2. Okay, you're going to take the whole circle, semicircle is a half of a circle, take the whole circle, which is pi r squared, the area of it anyhow, and divide it by 2, and you will get 8,836. Now, let's go back to the circle, or the whole right here. The area of this is pi r squared, the r is 30, when we put this in our table, we have to remember to place a minus in front of that area. Okay, the minus is very important. The reason for the minus is when we calculated the, the area of the rectangle, we did not subtract the area of the whole. So now, in the table here, we are subtracting the area of the whole. Now, the summation of this column is the denominator of both of those equations right there summation of areas so we have that already for both of the equations and then we're going to go and calculate our uh, dx values again going back we see that in the x direction all of these uh, centroid of the simple shape line up and they're all going to have the value of 75 and that is symmetry in the x direction okay and that is why all of these values are adding up Okay, and uh, we will take the area of uh, the rectangle times the x bar of the rectangle and it'll give you a dx right there, that value. You just multiply them. Let's go and look at the y direction now. If I were to take um, the rectangle, which is shape 1, and I want to get to the centroid right there in the y direction, I would take this value divided by 2. So 250 divided by 2 will give you 125. When we go to our table, 125 is what we place in there. And likewise, when we go to the semicircle, we have to get the distance from the lower left-hand corner all the way up to that point there. Now, we know that the, that little distance right in here from the cut edge of the semicircle, it's going to be 4r divided by 3 pi. Okay, the radius of that is 75, so 4 times 75 divided by 3, point, uh, 3 times pi, which is 3.14159265535. And uh, your calculator should have that button on there, so you could just press the button. And uh, that will give you the, 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 the little distance there, and then you have to add 250 to it to get the entire y value for the semicircle. Okay? And then uh, the circle, for the circle, that y value is actually given to the center of the circle, which is the centroid. Okay, those values should be placed right in here. 125, which is half of 250. And we did, uh, did do the calculation for the semicircle. When we look at that calculation right down here, 4r divided by 3 pi will give you 31.8 plus 250 will give you 281.8 and that value goes right in here. Now when we look at the uh, the circle in the y direction the y bar for that uh, 
that circle or the hole was given that number was given as 100 I am going to take to populate this uh, column here like I mentioned for the a dx the area of shape 1 times the dx distance will give you that likewise the area of shape 1 times the dy different uh, distance will give you the second column right here when we populate these with the proper numbers then we could summate them and we will get summation of the ADX and summation of ADY. Now when we look at our formula we have the ADX right there that's the value. Summation of area comes right there and likewise ADY right here will go right in this formula and then this stays constant as 43,509. Okay? When we divide those out, your ADX will be 75, and that proves symmetry because we could have just taken the 150 divided by 2 and got that number and recognize symmetry. When we look, calculate our ADY, it will be 150, 158 millimeters. And then the last step here that we're going to do is to go and update our diagram. We're going to place the centroid of the complex shape right there and we're going to go in the y direction 158 and we'll dimension the, the, that and from in the x direction we'll have 75 and we'll dimension that also right there and that concludes this problem I hope that uh, this explains how to calculate the centroid of a complex shape and I hope that uh, it helps you thank you very much bye bye